Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the CSR Net Mathematics July 2024 solution. Today I will explain you how you can solve the problems related to the numerical analysis which was asked in the part B and part C. Myself Dr. Harishkar, you can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of CSR UGC Net. In this playlist you can see I have uploaded the previous lecture on the LPP initial value linear complex and the real analysis of this July 2024. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel so that when I upload it my next lecture you will get the notification. Remember students in this year July 2024 numerical analysis part is very easy and two questions was asked in the part C and one question asked in the part B. So you can see that how many marks you can obtain easily from them 4.75 and 3.0. that means you can see that 12.50 marks from this numerical analysis portion in the examination so let's start with this how you can solve this problem in the less than of the 60 second time periods in the examination fine first of all it is the interpolation and if you already watch my this previous lecture before going to the examination then you can get your answer in a very very simple manner because i have already explained the shortcut way how you can get your answer anyhow if you if you still not watch then i requested you and i recommended you you can watch it so that you can learn the tricks before going to the next examination now it's a interpolation so firstly you can write the divided difference table it's a minus 1 0 because the value of the 2 is my unknown so i can skip that value and of 6 so i can write this is my 30 this is my 1 This is my ten, and this is my ninety. So, can you complete quickly? Thirty-one divided by one, thirty-one. Nine divided by three, nine divided by three. Second divided difference minus twenty-eight divided by four, three minus three zero by six. Seven divided by seven is one. So, can you write the polynomial? Because polynomial is denoted by G, so it will be because it's a Newton divided difference, so I can use the forward lines. So first line that is a minus thirty plus x plus one of thirty one plus x plus one of x into minus seven plus x plus one x x minus three of one. That's over. Now your target is to find the value of the c. So c is occurring at the value of the two. So I can find the value of G two. What is the right answer of this? Thirty. Two plus one is three. So three into thirty one. Two plus one is three into two into minus seven. So six into minus forty two. Two plus one is three into two. Two minus one is minus one minus six. So this number is minus sixty three. This uh, sorry plus sixty three by using these two, and it is minus forty eight. so the right answer is 15 is my correct answer of the problem fine now you can get the answer of the c now again it is given that g4 is equal to 5 what the student will do in general in the examinations they will write again the divided difference table 4 and then write here is 5 and then they will draw the complete table again but there is no need before going to that firstly we will check Whether g4 is equal to five obtained from this polynomial or not? If it is obtained from them, then there is no need to do this way. So let me check quickly. What is the g4? Four plus one is five. One fifty five. Four plus one is five. Five into four into minus seven. It's a minus one forty. Four plus one. Four. Four plus one is five. Four. Four minus three is one. That is plus. Twenty. So, what is the answer of this? It's a one seventy, and it is one seventy five. So that will be five, and it satisfied this given. So that means G four is equal to five will also satisfy this polynomial. Then there is no need to draw this table again. So that's over. Now what you need? You need a G five and G one. Can you find the G one firstly? So G one will be minus thirty. One plus one is two, sixty-two. One plus one, two. Two into one, 
वन एंड इट्स माइनस फोर्टीन वन प्लस वन टू वन वन माइनस ऑफ टू दैट्स माइनस फोर सो इट्स अ प्लस थर्टी टू माइनस एटीन दैट्स फोर्टीन इज द करेक्ट वे फाइंड द जी ऑफ फाइव अगेन सो जी ऑफ फाइव इज माइनस ऑफ थर्टी फाइव प्लस वन सिक्स सो दैट मीन्स सिक्स थ्री एटीन वन एटी सिक्स सिक्स फाइव प्लस वन सिक्स इंटू फाइव इंटू माइनस सेवन माइनस टू वन जीरो फाइव प्लस वन सिक्स फाइव फाइव माइनस थ्री इज माइनस टू माइनस सिक्सटी सो दैट विल बी वन फिफ्टी सिक्स माइनस इट इज वन वन फिफ्टी सिक्स जस्ट वेट फाइव प्लस वन सिक्स सिक्स इंटू फाइव थर्टी इज माइनस वन ट्वेंटी फाइव प्लस वन सिक्स इंटू फाइव फाइव माइनस थ्री इज प्लस सो इट्स प्लस ऑफ दिट सो इट विल बी माइनस वन फिफ्टी सो द राइट आंसर इज अगेन सिक्स इज द करेक्ट आंसर सो यू कैन सी द राइट आंसर आर बी सी डी आर माई राइट आंसर ऑफ दिस प्रॉब्लम फॉर मोर डिटेल अबाउट द प्रैक्टिस प्रॉब्लम यू कैन वॉच माई दिस लेक्चर यू मस्ट वॉच अबाउट माई दिस लेक्चर सो दैट यू कैन गेट योर आइडियाज हाउ यू कैन सॉल्व द इंटरपोलेशन प्रॉब्लम इन अ सिंपल मैनर एंड लेट मी नो इन द कमेंट बॉक्स वट वॉज योर आंसर इन द एग्जामिनेशन आर यू गेटिंग बी सी डी इन योर आंसर and you will get the 4.75 marks in the examination or not so let me know in the comment box whether you have got a b c d or not i hope you can like and comment on the video as well now the next question is it's a id number 4096 again is a part c so it will give you the 4.75 marks if you get the right answer so what is the problem is let s see the 2 cross 2 matrix such that it's a gauss seidel method on the system of the equation will converges for every initial guess so we all know first of all ax is equal to b this system will converges for every initial guess you have the two cases the first one is the matrix is the diagonal dominant or the matrix is not diagonal dominant fine if the matrix is diagonal dominant then you can say yes it converges for all the initial guess so firstly i will check which one is the diagonal dominant what is the property of the diagonal dominant you can pick the modulus value of the diagonals it must be greater than of the sum of the remaining elements first row and second two is greater than one so this property is satisfied but this is not so it means this is not diagonal dominant look at this one minus of 3 is greater than 1 satisfied 3 is greater than 2 satisfied yes it is diagonal dominant then it is convergent for all initial guess look at this one 3 is greater than 2 satisfied 2 is greater than 1 satisfied yes this is the diagonal dominant so this is also the correct answer 2 is greater than equal to 2 satisfied 3 is greater than 4 not satisfied so it is not diagonal dominant once it is not a diagonal dominant then we are looking for the spectral radius spectral radius of the iterative matrix that is d plus l inverse of u if the spectral radius is less than 1 then you can say it is convergent for all what is the spectral radius is the largest eigen value in the absolute value that is the largest eigen values of this matrix h now let's do what is the h corresponding to the first case so what what is the h is minus d plus l inverse of u so can you write the d plus l of the first example so that is a 5 1 2 0 0 then what is the d plus l inverse so you all know how you can find the inverse that's the reciprocal of the diagonal entries 0 will be 0 and 1 divided by the product of the elements this is my inverse now if you multiply this value by u that is into u 0 8 0 0 and if you taken as a negative sign that will be my h so minus first value will be 0 second number will be 8 over 5 this number will be 0 and this is my 8 over sorry this number is negative Minus one over ten, so it's a minus eight over ten. So what is the eigen value? So zero minus eight over five plus eight over ten 
zero. Can you find the eigenvalues of this matrix? Because the determinant is zero, the one eigenvalue is zero. Other eigenvalue is that trace. Trace is eight over ten. So what is the largest eigen what is the largest eigenvalue in the magnitude is eight over ten, which is less than of the one. So yes, the spectral radius is less than one, so it converges for all the values of the initial case. Now do the same procedure for the fourth case because fourth is not a diagonal dominant. What is my d plus l? This number is my two four three zero. Can you find the inverse of this matrix? The inverse of this matrix will be one over two, one over three, zero minus four divided by the product of the diagonal entries. Now, if you multiply this by u, then you will get as h. So what is the u? U is my zero two zero zero. So can you multiply them? It is my minus zero two over two. It's a one zero. And it's a minus eight over six. So if you take it as a negative inside, zero minus one zero, eight over six. What is the eigenvalues of this matrix? Zero, eight over six. Fine. So what is the largest eigenvalue? Is eight over six, which is not less than one. So therefore, this is not convergent for every initial case. So what is the right answer of this problem? A, C, B are my right answer of this problem. You can see that it's a very simple way you can get your answers in the Gauss-Seidel problem. For more detail about that, you must watch about my this lectures so that you can get a more practice by using the same kind of the shortcut tricks. So let me know again in the comment box whether you will get your answers are A, B, C in the examination and you will get 4.75 marks or not. Again, don't forget to like, share, and comment on my videos. Now this is the part B. So you will get the three marks after completing this question. So that is a four zero four five. Consider the initial value problem. So we all know the initial value problem is denoted by this case. So can you compare them? What is the f of x y? This is x into y plus one. If the value of the approximate solution y at the point zero point two by using the Euler method is given as 1.02, where the step size is given as a 0.1. What is the Euler method? Y of n plus 1 is y n plus h times slope. Fine. So now let me quickly find the value of y1 because the step size is my 0.1. So my target is to find the values of the y2. So what is the y1? That is a y0 plus h x0. Y zero. What is the y zero? Y zero is my beta. H is my zero point one. F zero is my zero. X zero is zero. So what is the value of the f of zero comma beta? That is a zero. So therefore, y one is my beta. What is the x one? X zero plus h. That is my zero point one because x zero is my zero. Now, y two. Y two is my y one plus h. Into f of x1 comma y1. This value is given as a 1.02. This is beta. This is 0.1. X into y plus 1. So can you solve that? It's a very simple. Now it's the beta times plus 0.01 times beta plus 0.01. So clearly say 1.01 is 1.01 beta. So beta will be 1 is the right answer of this. Problem. So you can see that it's a very simple approach. You can get your answer in this examination paper. For more details and for more practice related to the Euler methods and the Runge-Kutta problem, again I can recommend it you. You must watch about my this numerical analysis videos. So let me know in the comment box whether you will get the 4.75 plus 4.75 plus 3. That is whether you are getting the 12.50 marks in the examination paper or not. If not. Let me know how many marks you have obtained related to the numerical analysis problem in this paper. And don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel and watch these videos so that you can get increase your confidence level. You can subscribe my YouTube channel and thanks for the always support and the watching. Don't forget to share these videos with your friends. Happy learning, students. Best of luck.